Hello Redditors of the Internet, Noble Xenon here and welcome back to another Reddit video and today we will be looking at r slash quit your BS part 2. Let's get started. This was posted on r slash pics. This is how I quit my job last week. Jimmy's two week notice. So you quit eight years ago? The sticker says July 12th, 2012. I went to the original post to check and the date is a bit blurry so the day and the month might actually be debatable but the year certainly says 12. This next one's for the guy who had this running for three years. I had mine running for almost six. 52,000 hours, damn. But someone called them out. This is the iOS 10 or later stopwatch. iOS 10 was released in 2016. To be fair, we don't know if the stopwatch continues after an update, but it's also easy to cheat this by just adjusting the date. Guys, can you believe that this is a color photo? Sorry, but no it's not. Swans have orange beaks and mallards are green, purple blue with yellow beaks, not to mention humans don't have gray hands. And Pennywise the Lily comments, I've seen these before where it only talked about the straight line making it appear as if there are two images. Really strange how reposts change perspective over time. This next one is a media person spreading BS on Twitter. Speechless. Pakistan government has decided not to evacuate its citizens from the coronavirus hit Wuhan city to show solidarity with its ally China. And someone replies, Indian spin doctors at work. Pakistan official said it's not evacuating citizens from China's Wuhan because the World Health Organization does not recommend evacuation. People really need to stop making stuff up for attention and clicks. For this next one, we have a guy who apparently has the craziest life ever. I won the lottery and it made my life worse. In February 2003, I won the lottery. My wife, me, and my kids were thrilled and started planning all the things we were going to do and I quit my job. After a few months of living the high life, we were running out of money, so I went to the bank to borrow money so we could keep the lifestyle we have to become accustomed to. The interest on the loan became too much to handle, so we sold some assets and paid off the loan and I got my job back. In the end, we became poorer than before we won the lottery. Ask me anything. And the reply? I call BS. Cause not only did you win the lottery which made your life worse, you also have the coronavirus, have an electronic anus, what? Can't speak English, your grandfather owned a slave, you're a surgeon who did surgery so people can screw their a-holes, and he got drafted for the Iran war. You're either trolling or need to get a hobby. My bet is on trolling. But apparently his weirdness doesn't stop there. Another comment says, okay, this guy is kind of funny in an insanely stupid and juvenile way. Among his highlights, his house allegedly has a room dedicated to Fury Road that blasts the movie 24 seven at max volume. He is currently participating in the quickening Highlander. He won the rights from Microsoft to use the word app by beating Steve Jobs in a staring contest. He was then fired because he read 1984 and made it Microsoft's mission to put a telescreen in every house. He takes entire small companies and pickles them inside very big glass jars. Eventually, he wants to get a jar big enough to pickle Microsoft, possibly revenge for when they fired him after the telescreen debacle. In the comments on this post, he says he only won 2,500 euros, but figured it was enough to retire on because he's not a math guy. I wouldn't even call it trolling, just a bizarre form of performance art. Here on Reddit, we have some really weird creative writers. This next one's titled, Didn't Know 7.1 Magnitude earthquakes were a common occurrence in England. I live in England and a 7.1 is pretty normal around here. The strongest earthquake in England in the last 20 years was a 4.7 in 2002. However, the guy who called out the BS was also wrong. There was a 5.2 in 2008. This next one is selling a PC with a GTX 980 Ti and a 6th gen i5 for $5,000 built piece by piece. Quit your BS, this is a thousand dollar PC at best. If you actually managed to spend 5k on it, you got so ripped off it's not even funny. Bro, I built it piece by piece, if you don't like it, get on. Show me your parts list and how you managed to spend five grand so I can laugh at you please. It's a 980 Ti for God's sake. 
Even a 2080 Ti is only $1,000. This next one gave a brewery one star. My girlfriend and I went there today. The food sucked and the beer was not much better. The owner had an attitude. My girlfriend and I could not drink the beer as it was too heavy and it was warm. And the owner would not take it off the bill. Do not go there. You are better off going to a restaurant and spending your money. And the owner replies, sorry about your butthurt experience, we remember you very well and can't understand why you would visit a brewery if you only like light beers. You order two flights of beers, 10 4 ounce samples of dark beer and try them all, then bring them back up to the counter and tell the bartender that you don't like heavy beer? As for the beer being warm, that just does not add up as all 13 taps came from the same cold room and we had no other patrons complain about warm beer ever in our 5 years in business in the craft beer industry. As for the food being sucky, well then why did you eat all of it and then leave a $15 tip? If it was bad, wouldn't you have just returned it? Please stick to practice beer like Bud Light, Coors, Chick Ultras and you should be fine. Craft breweries are not for you. To be honest though, I don't like this response by the owner. It comes off as pretentious and not very professional. For this next one, here we go again. More people trying to get easy clicks from BS titles. Face masks are now a common sight in Toronto and people are getting nervous. Hashtag Toronto, hashtag coronavirus. And the reply? Please stop with these fear-baiting sinophobic headlines. Face masks have been common in Toronto for years. Many folks wear them, not only as protection from others, but to keep their own cold germs to themselves. It's actually considerate if you're sick and out in public. I see how it can be fear-baiting, but sinophobic? That's kind of a stretch. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good. You? I'm good. What are you doing? I'm about to clean the driveway. I see. Are you single? I'm not. I see. Are you? Yes. I went to high school with your wife. And then two weeks later he replies, Oh. This next one is titled, I really don't know why someone would make up such a blatant lie. What do they get out of it? Two seconds of googling proves they're wrong. Yeah, Uncle Sam gave me that pleasure in basic training. Spent my whole life in Florida, then had the bright idea to report to Fort Dix, New Jersey on December 28th. They hauled us back in from the first field exercise because the temp hit 35 below zero with wind chill at 70 below. And the reply? That's an insanely low temperature for New Jersey, like unbelievably low. As in, I literally didn't believe you, so I looked it up. Very easy to do in this day and age. Record high and low for Trenton for December 28th. Record low for Trenton was 14 degrees below zero Celsius. I mean, unless you were there in 1904, that's when the temperatures hit 34 below, not including wind chill. Unless I'm missing something? Do you have any proof besides official weather reports? I just can't understand why a person would lie about something so dumb yet so easily verifiable. And if you convert those to Fahrenheit, it still doesn't add up. This next one is an anti-vaxxer who lies about a resort reservation. One star. The owner of this resort wants my family's medical records to stay at this resort. That is a complete invasion of my privacy. Apparently the owner has some sort of agenda since no one can enter the resort without having just received the measles vaccination. I have cancelled our stay in fear of privacy breaching and measles outbreak from the unnecessary vaccination mandate. The owner replies, the health and safety of our guests are our top priorities, which is why we ask all of our guests and staff too, for the sake of public health and safety, to confirm they are up to date with recommended vaccines. I should add that we have no record of corresponding with this individual, and they have not made or cancelled a reservation. I find it odd that a resort is asking for medical records, but thankfully it did keep this anti-vaxxer away, so. Alright, continuing with the anti-vaxxers, yeah, you're a doctor. All right. As a doctor, I will tell you there are no studies of primate testing or testing the safety of vaccines or truly the effectiveness of vaccines for a great many of years, but I'll keep looking to say it's completely safe to inject children. I'd be apprehensive about anything if I was a parent. Interesting story. Doctors who work with chemo are sold these drugs at a buy low, sell high condition. So they buy it, say, at 200 and you are billed 1200 for a treatment that has an about 13% success rate far Pharmaceutical companies do not have you in mind when making money and they make those vaccines as well. Just a thought really. And the reply? As a doctor? BS. If I was a parent? 
You claim to have an autistic child in another comment. And unfortunately for both of us, most of this guy's history was looking for guys to nail his wife. What? Oh wow, we're on a roll with the anti-vaxxer posts. Another one, titled Lady Tries to Blame Vaccines After Her Junkie Son Contracts HIV. She has her status as feeling angry. This year keeps getting worse for my poor James. He overdosed on New Year's Day, but not his fault. Now the doctor said he has HIV. Do not get the flu vaccine. They don't know what viruses go in it. Three of my nephews are autism and now my poor son has to live with AIDS. Pray for him, please. Now, I knew James in high school and I stopped being his friend the night he tried pressuring me into shooting up heroin at a party. I'm sorry he has HIV, but stop adding to all of this anti-vax BS. Alright, enough with the anti-vaxxers. This next one's a review titled Owner Calls BS on Rat S. One star, I delivered supplies through the back door to a storage area and rat droppings. The owner replies, this is false, you are wrong, you are lying. A, we do not receive deliveries through our back door. B, our facility exceeds the health and safety expectations of all my staff and our guests along with the Toronto Health Public Food Safety Program. C, I have a personal relationship with all of our suppliers and their delivery teams and I have verified that you are not employed by any of our suppliers. Based on your history of leaving questionable reviews on Google, I will file this one under invalid claim. Thank you. This next one is titled, It's Not the Apocalypse, Yet. Hashtag coronavirus, large explosion in Wuhan, China just happened about an hour ago. Hashtag Wuhan, hashtag Wuhan coronavirus. This account is spreading a bunch of fake videos from a chemical plant explosion in Tianjin in 2015. Wait, what do explosions even have to do with the coronavirus? Doesn't make any sense. This next one is a supposed artist charging an insane amount of money to put a filter on pet pictures. Blocked me right after I called them out. Custom digital pet portraits, photorealistic $75 and a color palette $100. Clear reference photo required. Reminder to please buy a portrait to support your local broke idiot son of a bee. I'm pretty sure that's too much money to have someone put a filter on a picture of your animal. This one's just a straight up scam. This next one is a well-known dermatologist who calls out an essential oil stand. Our first point of contact for viruses is our nose. If you are burning antiviral essential oils around you, this will kill off the virus before it enters your system. Sorry, but antiviral essential oils don't exist. This next one is a legend in the support department gets called out for whining too much. Windscribe VPN pain. Number one, support. Windscribe support has only responded to two tickets, one asking me for logs which were sent ASAP, never heard back. Another has a snarky message defending the support responses. There has not been any attempt to address any of the below issues. I asked Windscribe for support here on Reddit and was told to stop whining and find another VPN service. What the hell? Number two, crashes. Windscribe app now crashes when selecting any port. Pick a location and app crashes. Any location, app crashes. This is a new behavior. Three, auto connect broken. A, auto connect is on, but the Windscribe iOS app freezes with every attempt. This means that having to manually open Windscribe app and pick a new location and wait dozens of times a day or even an hour when on the iPhone frequently. Most accessed app is Windscribe. Sad. Four, auto connect broken B. Many times you think VON is connected as expected, but you discover that's not the case. Open Windscribe iOS app and you are greeted with the disco logo dancing while loading. Connection was never on. 5. Access denied. Completely stonewalled regardless of location, regardless of using Canadian ports from Skype, call and chat, LinkedIn, posting, white pages lookup, Taco Bell account access, Twitter, Gmail, and the list just keeps on growing. Other times you can get access to sites but not without effort and experimenting with locations in the app, wasting massive amounts of time just trying to connect to basic services. Even then you get presented with captures. At Windscribe. Please keep it professional and apply effort to resolving these problems. You have the logs as requested. I am running the latest Windscribe iOS app, no updates available, and running iOS 13.1. 
Well, so far it seems like the OP has a legitimate set of complaints here, but the developer replies, Dude, you were complaining about Windscribe for three years now. You are literally a legend in the support department. I think you mentioned every single problem that one can possibly have in your 30 plus support tickets you submitted. We gave up responding to them because it's utter insanity as you mentioned over 50 unique issues, most of which don't make sense that you allegedly had. Nobody has this many problems and keep using the service for over three years. I think this guy just wants to continually troll the Windscribe support team. There can't be any other explanation for sending this many support tickets. These guys should start a band, they sound okay together. What do you mean they're the same person? R slash whoosh. Did you forget to change accounts? And this last one posted an adorable dog on r slash aw, titled Doggo of My Girlfriend. But someone calls him out. I guess your girlfriend sent me a larger image. Jesus Christ, you killed him. Anyway, I would like to thank all of my patrons, especially Peter Dankledge, Seth Southwell, Spoonie the Rogue, and Forever Tired. You can join in the link below, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like. If you have something interesting to say, don't forget to comment. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. See you guys next time.